All right, so for this build, I followed an instructable by Brown Dog Gadgets. I'll link that down in the description if you want to follow along. It's a really great instructable, really simple, really easy to follow. Um, the first thing that we're going to need is all of our parts. So zoom in a bit. Going to need a breadboard for making all of your connections because we are just doing a breadboard build on this today. You're going to need your 556 chipset. Um, you can use two 555s or you can use just the one. I used one and it worked out great. You're going to need an 8 ohm speaker for an output. Um, also in his instructor, he does provide a schematic for an output jack. I haven't built that yet. I just went with the simple build and doing just the speaker. I'm going to need two 500, 500k ohm resistor or potentiometers so you can control frequencies. One 5k ohm potentiometer for volume control. This is not necessary, but it's helpful as these things make a lot of noise. There it is. There's my focus. Focus. Anyway, um, you need one 1k ohm resistor. I can't believe I focused on that like that. Very nice. And two 0 0.01 microfarad capacitors for that. You're also going to need a, some sort of power. You don't have to use a 9 volt battery, but I use a 9 volt battery and a 9 volt battery clip. And also just jumpers. Tons of them. Um, well, not tons of them, but jumpers. Uh, neat trick is if you have access to cross connect wire, it's 26 gauge, it works really great, and it's solid conductor and is really easy to work with on the breadboard. So, with that being said, there's our parts. Let's have us a sip of coffee. And let's begin. All right, so step one of the whole thing is just to mount your chip and your potentiometers. So what we're gonna do is we will mount our chip somewhere over here on the left, kind of basically follow along with his instructable verbatim. Sorry if this isn't in view. I'm trying. Snap that down in there. Um, these are pins 1 through 14 in this kind of motion. So 1 through 7, 8 through 14 on this side. We want to take our two 500k ohms and I put them to where, you know, they line up with some of the numbering just to make snapping things in easier. But you want to kind of put them towards the back of the board. Like so, space them pretty good. And then take your one 5K volume resistor and kind of put it on the other side just so you have plenty of space to work with. On my breadboard, if we can zoom in far enough here to see it, I did put a plus and negative on here because I'm not going to be doing, I'm not going to run power on both sides, on both, on both rails. I'm just going to do a positive up here, a negative over here, or ground, whatever you want to call it, just so you can kind of get a good view of that. So let's go back out. Now, we've got our resistors and our chipset mounted. The first thing we want to do is we want to take... Now, I did not keep these in order. I should have, because I might have to make new ones. It's on our first frequency resistor right here. We want to run from the center conductor on that. To positive and again we're just running it straight over here that's our positive term or bus there we'll call it a bus everybody like saying bus that's step one step two is going to be using a jumper to go from pin one to the outside leg of the variable resistor and outside just means this one closest to the chipset so 
Let's zoom in. That seems about where I want to be. And we are going to do that. So from the outside, right here, to pin one of the chipset. Voila. Step two, or next step. I'm going to lose count of steps is mounting our resistor. Take our resistor, if you can see that, and we want to go from pin one to pin six. And I'm not very good at the seeing, so whatever. Here we go. Pin six. Nope, see, look, that's pin five. I'd have messed that right up. Probably blown myself up. Anyway, next we want to take one of our capacitors and take that from pin six to our negative rail. Just like that. And that's our negative rail down here, our positive rails up here, our negative rails down here. Just to reiterate that. We also want to put a jumper between pin 2 and pin 6, one of our short guys here. Doesn't have to be crazy in there. Sorry if I'm out of the frame. There we go, that'll work for our purposes. Really should have put these jumpers in order now that I'm thinking about it. Next, we want to go pin 7 to negative. That's a small one, also. So we'll just kind of, I know where that one goes. We will go from pin 7, follow that all the way over here. This is a hundred times harder to do. Trying to keep the breadboard in frame. Now we've got pin 7 to negative. Now pin 14 to positive. Take another short one, probably this guy. Pin 14 up here to positive. Just remember that the pins go what's that, counterclockwise around the chip and you'll be fine. So pin 14 is this last pin up here. And run that to positive. We also want to jump between pins 14 and 10. Running out of short ones. So we've got, I'm going to go 14 to 10. 14 to 10. Then we want to go positive variable to our other resistor. Or positive to variable resistor. We're going to the center rail on our other one. So we want to take another jumper from the positive side. Go to our positive rail. Bring that all the way over here. And go to the middle leg of our other frequency controlling potentiometer. It's kind of difficult to do in the camera. Okay. Then we want another long jumper to go all the way. I mean, such long distances. Take a jumper from the outside leg of the variable resistor to pin 13. So I think that's our longest one. We use our longest one. So again, our outside all the way to pin 13, which actually isn't that far. And I believe what these are doing is running, I forgot, I've printed out a little printout of the, uh, I don't know if we can see that, of the 556 dual timer. Now when we're going from the variable resistor to pin 13, pin 13 is the discharge. 
And I believe we're using that to manipulate the threshold and triggers to change, to like kind of frequency modulate. I could be wrong. Let me know down in the comments if you're watching this video and I'm completely wrong because honestly, I'm trying to learn myself. This is very, it's fun, but I don't know what I'm doing. I want to know what I'm doing. That's what we're doing. Anyway, so 13 to the outside leg of that resistor. Now we take a small jumper, this little guy here, and go between pins 13 and 12, which links our discharge and threshold of the second timer on the card. Twelve, thirteen. There we go. And now, getting so close, running out of jumpers. We're going to go from pin 12 and bring our capacitor to negative. Now, this part does get kind of tricky if you're using a setup like this because you want to... Basically, I'm going to just take this capacitor and put it down on this negative rail. Now, it doesn't link to anywhere. We're going to take another jumper and jump from here over to pin 12, which is on the other side. If we had it set up differently, we could just run pin 12 to this negative rail, but we don't have a negative rail up there. You can, if you want, feel free. I'll take that to 12. And that will get us to the negative rail from pin 12. Hope that makes sense. And we want to go pin 10 to our 5k variable resistor. That is our output. And we're going to take that to the center of it, I believe. Pin 10 to the out, oh no, to the outside leg. So we're going to go outside leg of our resistor for our volume and take this to pin 10. Like that. That should give us part of what we need. Now our variable resistor to speaker and speaker to pin 9. So we got to take our speaker. Mine is not pretty. Um, I just ordered an 8 ohm speaker. The wiring on it sucked, so I added my, I just soldered my own on there to make it a little better. Make it work out a little better for me. So we're going to take your speaker and connect one wire to the middle leg of the variable resistor. Like this. And the other goes to pin 9, like that. And voila, there we go. Now we want to go from pin 5 to pin 8. Those are, that's your output and your trigger for the second timer. And you want to link those together. And pin eight. Sorry if my head was in the way on that one. And now we're going to add power. Oh, there's one thing that he doesn't mention in here, and it's on the schematic. And that I noticed, I, I, I've unplugged it and plugged it in. It doesn't seem to matter, but there's this jumper from pin four to positive. And pin four seems to be reset A. I'm not sure what that does. I did incorporate it into mine. I'm not sure. It doesn't really do anything. You can unplug it and plug it in. But I assume in the future, if you were to do something else with this, it would matter. So I did it. And then we should just be able to apply our power. And you know what? I got to... I have... I need to move this capacitor over one so I can plug my power into it. Yet still stay here. That'll work.
and voila. Thank you very much for watching this video. <laughs> I know it's pretty painful, but I don't know. That's just, that's just cool to me. Sounds good. I mean, doesn't sound good. But anyway, so anyways, um, let it build, let it build, and it's gone.